In this video, I will be performing a linear static analysis on this pin truss. Full details of this problem are available on page 359 of the PDF linked in the video description below. First thing I'll go ahead and do is switch over to my new Patreon database or session. I'll start a new Patreon database and I'll call it problem 8. My units for this exercise are inches, pounds, PSI, and degrees Fahrenheit. I'll click OK on this dialog. For my model, I'll create it from scratch using only nodes and elements. So I'll go to my meshing tab. And here under node, I'll click edit. And here I'll create four nodes. One at my origin. One at 20 inches in the X one at 20 inches in the X and Y, one at 20 inches vertically up. Hit enter or apply. And you'll notice that the nodes are just tiny points. To reveal them, I would go back here and click node size. And you'll see one here, 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 and here. Now I have to link the nodes together with an element so go to the meshing tab here click edit for element your shape will be a bar and simply connect the dots so element one is from here to here element two is from here to here element three is from here to here four is from here to here five is from here to here and six is from here to here so now I have the truss, I can create my material and assign them to this, these elements by going to this tab. Click isotropic, call this material just material. For input properties, give it a Young's modulus of 1 E7 PSI and a Poisson ratio of 0.3. Your thermal expansion coefficient is 1 E to the negative 6 or 1E negative 6, click OK and click Apply. You've created this material, it's time to assign them to the various rods here. So under Windy Properties, click Rod. Two elements in here have an area of 0 0.707 inches, that would be this diagonal and this diagonal. So I will first call this rod 2 and 4 to apply to elements 2 and 4. This is my name so then I go under input properties and I select the material I just created. My area is 0 0.707 inches. Click OK and apply it to these two members and make sure you have this beam element icon selected. This allows me to select just beam elements. So select elements 2 and 4, click OK and apply. Now for my next property, for the rest of the elements, 1, 3, 5, and 6, my area is 1 inch. My application region would be these other elements, so select them. Add them, OK and apply. Now I can go on to define my boundary conditions. So I'll first create two pins, call it my XY pins, so they prevent translation in the X and Y directions, so 0 in the X, 0 in the Y, and the freeze, and the Z is free to translate at the moment for your application region. We're applying this directly to the FEM or the nodes, so then just drag and select these two leftmost nodes, click OK and apply. Now we'll apply restraints so this is not allowed to move in the Z direction. So here we'll just call this next one Z constraint for your input data. Leave every T1 and T2 blank except for T3 at a zero there. Click OK and for your application region select all the nodes. You'll see they're circled in a sort of pink square. Add them, OK, and apply. And now I have to add my element uniform temperature loads. 
So here, zero degrees Fahrenheit will be applied to only 1D elements. Your input data will be just zero degrees. Click OK. For your application region, just select every element except this one. Add it, add it, OK, and apply. We'll make a new one called 100F. For your input data, it's 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Select this element here, add it, OK, and apply. Now I can run my analysis for the entire model. Before I go ahead and do that, I want to modify my subcase. So I'll modify a default subcase by highlighting it. My output request, I wish to output element forces. So make sure you have displacement, stress, and force here so, uh, included in this list. Click Apply here, or you can click OK here on the bottom, or Apply, whichever is there. Click Cancel after you hit Apply. Hit Apply to submit the job to the MSC Nastran. Once the analysis is done, I'll reset the graphics here to clean it up. Reorient this to view it from the front. And now I can import my XDB results. Let me go ahead and turn off these node icons here. So here I've selected XDB and I've hit apply. It's imported the results. So now I can view various things. So for my displacements here under vector, I will display vectors indicating the displacements. So here I select Displacements Translational. I want to view components just in the X. So when I hit Apply, you see my arrows here. So I get a 1.82 and 1.82 here. And I believe that is not correct. So it should be getting a 1.27 and 7.27. So when I look at this problem again, I forgot to include my load here at this node. So to add this, I will have to go back to my Boundary Conditions tab. Under Nodal Force, apply a load called F. And this load is 0 in the X, 1000 in the Y, and 0 in the Z. Click OK for your application region. Simply make sure this is selected to FEM. So you can only select nodes, select this node, add it, OK, and apply. So now I have all my boundary conditions. Now I can reanalyze this by going to Analysis, Analyze Entire Model. When I hit Apply, I'll be asked to overwrite the previous job files, and you just click Yes for both dialogs. Once that's done, import the XDB results, click Apply. Under Results, go back to Vector, select this result case, select Displacements Translational, and for Show As, select Component XX, and after you hit Apply, you get uh, 1.2 or 0 0.00127 inches, and uh, this value here for the bottom. And when you compare it to what we should get, you actually do get those values. Now for the Y direction, let me clean this up. Simply switch that YY on, turn off the X X, turn it on, or hit apply. So we get uh, 6.36 and 3.64. 6.36 and 3.64. So here uh, for P1 we get a compressive value or an element force of 636 pounds. To view that, you're still in vector. You move up and select bar forces. For a component, you press or check x x, and x x is basically along the line. So even if it's diagonal, x x, the element x x is down the line. So I'm going to hit Apply. And what I have to do is here's Select Elements. 
if I had apply them and not do it yet. What I have to do is here select none. Here select all the elements. And one last thing I want to do. Well, I won't do that yet. Hit apply. And here you have a view of all the values. And they're not easy to read. What I can do is switch this to fix, click OK, and hit apply. So now I know this has a force of 636, 363, 363, 514, and uh, 900. And when I look at these values, I get 636, 900, 363, 514, 363, and 0. And that confirms what I get here. Now to view the stresses, I go back to select results, scroll to the bottom, click stress tensor. Here, select component for quantity. And I want to view my stresses in the X direction, so I leave this checked, click apply. Now I can read it off as 363. And there should be no difference for the bars with the area of one inch squared. But you'll notice a difference for the diagonals. So let me go ahead and confirm the values. So 727, 1272. That's what we get here. And the other ones should be the same as the bar forces with the area taken into account. Clean it up, save, and the sense of this exercise.